My name is Natalie Rodriguez, and I am a family physician. I am an associate clinical professor in the Department of Family Medicine at the School of Medicine, and I am also the associate director of the UCSC student-run free clinic project. I grew up in Los Angeles, and my family is very close. My family came to the US as refugees from Cuba, and that played a big role in my upbringing. I'm just hearing stories about their life um, before they immigrated and just hearing um, stories of um, how things were um, so different and the challenges that my family faced um, in coming to uh, the U.S. But uh, it was always um, very much uh, seen as a, a positive, something that uh, my family was really proud of and that they really wanted my sister and I to know that history of uh, their story and, and our family. And I grew up very close to both sets of my grandparents. They were very involved in um, taking care of my sister and I growing up. And I feel so fortunate because I still have three living grandparents. Um, and I'm so incredibly thankful uh, for the role that they have played in my life uh, all along, but especially now as I get older, I appreciate them more and more. So my family was not particularly um, educated in Cuba. Um, they were mostly um, like skilled workers or business owners. But I definitely grew up um, hearing uh, the importance of education. And again, that was really part, part of um, my family's sacrifice in coming to the US was to give um, my generation uh, a better chance at having um, a, a successful life. And uh, I think I grew up believing and hearing that education was a huge part of that. Uh, the flip side of that coin is that I really liked school. And so that was definitely something growing up that um, was a highlight for me. I loved learning. I loved reading. I loved um, the social part of school, um, being with friends. And so it, it was definitely something that you know, my family didn't have to like encourage me to do my homework or anything like that. I, I was pretty independent as far as that was concerned. Um, but it was absolutely something that was very valued in my family. Um, and then the other part is that I grew up in a neighborhood that had a really excellent school. And so I was very fortunate to have been surrounded by other students who really liked school where that was really valued in my friends' families and just the experience of going to school. You know, at, at my school, if you just kind of went with the flow, um, you could very easily end up at a four-year university. Um, and so in all of the ways that because my family was new to the U.S. and um, hadn't gone to college themselves, they didn't necessarily know how to guide me in that way, but uh, I was able to reap the benefits of the school that I went to and my friends who um, did come from families where their parents had gone to college. My interest in medicine was sparked very young. I don't have a true aha moment, but as I have reflected over the years, I think there were two things that were really instrumental. Um, I had a pretty traumatic birth story. Uh, my family, my mom was very sick um, and in the hospital before I was born. And it was kind of touch and go about whether I would live or not. And uh, there was a doctor who was instrumental in that story and in giving my mom hope. And um, he was there at my delivery and 
brought me out, you know, my, the story that my family tells is that he brought me out, you know, holding me by my feet upside down (laughs) out um, for my family to see that I was not just alive, but screaming my head off. Um, And just hearing about him growing up, he, he died very young. And so I don't have a memory of ever having to gotten to meet him, but um, hearing the stories uh, about him, and he also was a uh, Cuban American, and so was a part of my family's community. And I think it really inspired me. Um, like, wow, look at the role that he played in in my life and in my family's story. And then I also had an amazing pediatrician who also was Cuban American and um, she was also part of the community and uh, had grown up in the same town as my parents in Cuba. And uh, I loved her and she was so inspiring. She was really my first mentor, the first person I really looked up to and said, I wanna be like her. And so while I don't have an aha moment, I think both of those people, and the ways that they played a role in my life. And then the ways they were um, seen and talked about in the community, I think were really instrumental in those first ideas for me of what what it means to be a doctor, how you can have a positive um, effect on people's lives and be um, a healer. And that was really my, my first inspiration. You know, it's so funny. I applied to three colleges, <laughs> um, but I had the privilege of coming to UCSD uh, when I was on the drill team in high school as part of our band camp and had just such an amazing experience, like living in the dorms and exploring campus and Uh, I think that it really helped me envision like what it would look like and feel like to be a student at UCSD. And I just knew, I I think it was my sophomore year that I came for band camp. And I was like, I want to come here. And I bought a sweatshirt at the bookstore that I actually still own. And I, I never really wavered. I, I knew that this is where I wanted to come. And Obviously, it was a great science school, and so I knew that was going to help me get um, closer to my goals, and I was committed in it to win it, and so I was so excited when I got accepted and um, was, was able to make that dream come true as well. First, I'm an extrovert. So like, I love meeting new people and that part of coming to school was so exciting to get to um, meet my sweet mates and to, um, yeah, get to explore campus and San Diego together. Like that was so exciting and something I was very much looking forward to. But uh, my family, we have this story that we tell a lot and that is, that you know, my family came down with me to orientation and we had such a great time and it was so positive and they were so excited for me and I was so excited. And then the last day came and it was time for them to say goodbye and go home. And um, I remember they dropped me off at the shuttle stop in front of Warren and they didn't get out. They just pulled into the shuttle stop and we said our goodbyes and I hopped out and I was like choking back tears the whole way to my dorm. And my family was so shocked. They were like, what? (laughs) Why are you crying? You're so excited. This is so great. And it was, but I think it was all of the emotion that, that the excitement had kind of masked came out in that moment. Um, but it was, um, I just remember it being such a fun and exciting time to get to be independent and, um, make, you know, new friends and, um, I don't know, get to be in a world that was so different, um, from my town growing up, even though LA and San Diego are so different, it just felt 
in that moment, it felt so different to me. Um, and uh, I have incredibly positive memories of that, that time in my life. Lots of phone calls is how I stay connected to my family. Even now, my friends always um, have made fun of me in, in the best way uh, because I talk to my family a lot, like almost every day. And um, I remember, you know, getting phone calls from my mom if I ever went like two days without talking to them. She'd be like, are you okay? Are you alive? I'm okay. I'm alive. Just studying. <laughs> um, but yeah. And then, you know, it was so nice to be, uh, two hours away from home and be able to, to go home and connect with my family and, um, see my friends. And that was really, really nice. And my family also loves to come down and visit. And so I've gotten to, um, to spend, you know, time with them. It was just perfect, right? Far enough away where I felt like I had my life here and could enjoy it, uh, but not so far that I couldn't see my family or they couldn't see me as often as we wanted to. My academic path was a little rocky. <laughs> um, I, even though I went to a really excellent high school, I was not prepared for the rigors of college and the difference of um, how independent you need to be in your studying. You know, the idea that you take one midterm and one final and that's your entire grade was very jarring for me. And, and I also think I, you know, got some bad advice in that this, I think, Back then it was very pervasive and I think it still exists, but the idea that if you don't have a perfect GPA that you can't go to medical school um, was definitely something that I heard a lot as a student. And so once I didn't have a perfect GPA, then you know that belief of like, oh no, I'm not gonna be able to achieve this goal kind of wormed its way in to my subconscious and then it kind of affected how I approached school in general where, well, I, I could study really, really hard and still not get the A um, that I need, or I could study maybe a little bit less and have a good time and pretty much get the same grade. And so I feel like it really um, affected my mindset around school. And I think at times I just wasn't as committed as I could have been because it felt in some ways it felt like pointless right I, I wasn't going to be able to do what I wanted to do uh, I think the other part too is that I came in loving the sciences and I was going to be a biochem cell bio major um and I enjoyed those classes, but they were hard. They were very hard, very challenging. And I was a literature minor and those classes were so fun and much less challenging for me. And I realized like, I'm way better at writing a paper than I am at taking a chemistry quiz. Uh, and so I considered changing my major because I just enjoyed it so much more. But my, my family wasn't that supportive of that idea. They're like, no, we didn't sacrifice and send you to UCSD for you to be a lit major, you keep going. And so I did, and I'm so glad I did. I really, in the end, I loved being um, a bio major, but there were definitely some rough patches along the way. So as I was finishing college, I had explored some other things. I was uh, lucky enough to get a research internship my junior year. So I joined a lab and really got exposed to the research process and took on projects and um, was even offered a full-time job uh, after I graduated. And so I really got to try that on 
do I like research enough to commit my life to this? And it was really um, intellectually stimulating, but it didn't quite meet my my need for connection, right? I really wanted to connect with people. And I was, you know, helping to develop these medications. Well, I wanted to see people get better from the medications I was helping to develop. And, um, and so I really had to wrestle with like, oh no, <laughs> I may have made some mistakes along the way, but I'm pretty sure like, I wanna be a doctor. I wanna pursue medical school seriously and, how do I fix what I broke in college kind of a thing. And I applied to medical school um, just to see what would happen. And I got, you know, a couple of interviews, but got waitlisted, didn't get in. And then at that point, it was like, for reals, I, I knew that this is what I was made to do. This is the only thing I want to do. So I, what do I have to do at this point to help myself um, be successful and, and get into school. And I was so fortunate to have been accepted to the post-baccalaureate program at UCSD, where I met some incredible mentors, um, incredible support system, and all of those things, right? I was able to take extra courses to show that I was academically ready for the rigors of medical school. I was um, mentored and supported with, you know, this is how you interview and uh, this is how you want to talk about your experiences in a way that really highlight your strengths and all these things that I didn't have up until that point. And so I was, um, yeah, just so incredibly fortunate. And I say this all of the time, but I wouldn't be where I am today if it hadn't been for that year and that experience and really gave me an opportunity to, um, to mature and be um, the kind of medical student that I wanted to be. So a uh, really interesting um, season of my life because I was waitlisted here at UCSD and had gotten into a program in Chicago and they offered me an opportunity to come out there and spend the summer. And I was really excited because I was like, wow, I'll get to meet people. And there was um, like a summer prereq course that um, students took to ensure that um, we were academically ready. And I was like, sure, I'll take, you know, I'll take a class. But really, I was more excited just about meeting people because I didn't know anyone in Chicago. And so I flew out and I was there for five days. <laughs> and then UCSD called and said, we have a swap for you. Do you want to come home? And of course, um, I wanted um, to be here. Um, I felt like I knew a lot of people at UCSD. I knew a lot about UCSD and there were things I was excited about participating in, including the free clinic. And so it was a pretty easy choice to hop on a plane and come home. <laughs> Med school's hard, period, right? It's no matter where you go, it's a challenging experience for everyone. But UCSC, I have to say, it was particularly challenging back then. It was very, very basic science oriented and there weren't a lot of students of color. The diversity wasn't um, what it is today. And so as excited as I was to be there, it also was a little bit of a lonely experience where I just felt like there weren't um, as many people that I connected with as I um, would have wanted. And, uh, you know, I, I faced some struggles from the administration of they weren't sure that I had what it took to be successful. And there were, so there were some concerns and, um, and, you know, now I can say very confidently that um, some of those questions and concerns that came up were kind of the, the, the boost that I needed to really show like, yes, like I 
am absolutely ready. I, I can do this and I'm going to show you um, how successful I can be in medical school. Um, so I worked really hard academically to, um, to demonstrate that um, so that you know, I didn't want anyone to have to worry about me. And I also, you know, in my heart felt ready, like, no, I, I worked really hard to get here. I deserve to be here. And so I wanted to show, um, show everyone that um, they hadn't made a mistake in, in letting me in. Uh, that being said, you know, I got involved at the UCSC student run free clinic project pretty early. And, um, and that was, I think, just instrumental in my success as a medical student, and then really instrumental in just my life and career trajectory. It was the place that I met incredible mentors who were working in communities the ways that I dreamed about working in communities. And it was the place where I got to connect with patients who reminded me so much of my family and really created that sense of community that um, I was longing for. And so it was just an incredible experience for me. And I got to do other things. I was on the student council and I, um, helped to develop a couple of electives, um, one of them at the Monarch School, um, which medical students are still involved there, um, but it's a school for um, unhoused children in San Diego, and that was really exciting to get to go down and spend time with them every week, and we taught them science and bring um, fun experiments and um, things like that to their science class. So that was also something that was really fun and really special that I got to be a part of as a student. So I matched at a program here in San Diego at the um, Scripps Chula Vista Family Medicine Residency Program. And at that point I had lived in San Diego for 10 years and I was, pretty ready to leave. I wanted to go and have an adventure somewhere else. I, I was pretty sure I wanted to settle here in San Diego because um, I was really interested in working with underserved Latinx communities. I really loved the border area and, and the patients that I had um, been exposed to up until that point. But, but I, I felt like, oh, but I wanna go somewhere else. And then I'll come back and I'll work here. Um, and so I explored programs all up and down California. I went to the East Coast and interviewed there. But in the end, the program here in Chula Vista just captured my heart. I felt like uh, as much as I wanted to have an adventure, I wanted to be the absolute best doctor I could be for my patients. And I felt like the program here was going to train me um, in that way. The faculty there were amazing um, and inspiring, and I loved what they were doing um, in and with the community. And I felt like I, I've worked so hard to get here. <laughs> um, I just needed to make that decision, right? Like, where am I, where can I go to be trained to be the best doctor I can be? And I never regretted my decision to stay here in San Diego and stay at the program in Chula Vista. I, um, I learned so much. I was so inspired. My um, faculty members are still um, dear um, friends and colleagues and mentors um, to this day. And I just know that um, the lessons that I learned there in being in and with community um, were just instrumental in helping me um, kind of refine the career that I wanted for myself. So I never intended to do academic medicine. Uh, when I finished my residency, I was very committed to being um, in the community, to continuing to serve in the South Bay. But, you know, that 
the part of my heart that had been captured by the free clinic as a medical student was still there. And when I graduated medical school, I said to Dr. Ellen Beck, our founding director, I said, I'll be back in three years, save me a job. And she did. And so I came back as a fellow in underserved healthcare. And I was so excited to be a part of the free clinic to get to work with the students and do some teaching and hopefully, you know, some mentoring and supporting of students. Cause again, I, I felt so strongly, like I had had, you know, this amazing experience at free clinic, but not all of medical school was so positive and so wanting to be um, uh, a positive light in students' lives who maybe um, were having a similar experience to mine. And so that was it. I was, I was just, I was just going to work at free clinic. And, um, and then, you know, things took a turn and, uh, there was a new curriculum at the medical school happening at that time, and there was opportunity for teaching in small groups, and I loved the idea of having a small group of students that I got to work with for two years. It's like, wow, what an amazing opportunity that is so different from the experience I had as a student. And so that was really my first dipping my toes into academic medicine, and and over the years, I think what I found was that uh, I think that um, I, I had a very closed minded view of what academic medicine could look like, that it was something, you know, where you, you know, had to, it had to look a certain way. And I've been so appreciative of the fact that I've gotten to, to do it in a way that feels authentic to, um, to me and to my passions, um, to the things that I am excited about. And I just, yeah, feel so lucky that I've basically had this opportunity to build my dream job. And that over the course of the last 13 years, you know, doors have opened and I've um, had opportunities to, to get to be involved in um, the medical school in ways that I didn't dream of when I was a student. My day to day. So every day is different. Every half day is different because I don't ever spend a whole day in the same place. Um, so I start somewhere in the morning and then I eat my lunch in the car and am somewhere else in the afternoon. And I love that. I love the variety um, so I usually am seeing patients down in the South Bay in the mornings, whether that's working with residents or seeing patients at the high schools. I'm still um, really passionate about adolescent medicine and school-based health, and so I get to do that um, pretty regularly uh, down in the South Bay and in Southeast San Diego. Uh, and then in the afternoon or evenings, I'm at free clinic and getting to work with our amazing patients and students and volunteers to take care of our, you know, some of the most vulnerable people in our city. And that's really inspiring. And then in the interim, I also get to be on campus teaching, whether that's in the practice of medicine course um, that I still am a part of. We have free clinic classes. Um, I am the director of the medical Spanish course and have an amazing instructor who teaches, but I, I love to, to be a part of that class as well when I can. And then, you know, getting to meet with students um, is also a, a huge part of my week. And, um, I wear a couple extra hats. I'm one of the advisors for the UCSD uh, Extension Post Baccalaureate Program. And so I get to um, meet with students who are on their pre med journeys. I'm also the director of the Conditional Acceptance Program at UCSD. And so have a small group of students that are um, having a, a post bac like experience. Um, and so get to, to meet and um, spend time with them as well throughout my week. So 
um, there's a lot of variety, a lot of moving parts. I have to know exactly what day it is every day or else I will accidentally go to the wrong place. Um, but I love the variety um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I feel so fortunate to have such a rich history at the free clinic to be able to say like, this is something I've been a part of since I was in your shoes. <laughs> and I'm still taking care of patients who I took care of when I was a first year medical student, which was 20 years ago. You know, one, it's the, the sadness that that's the case, right? That there are still people who didn't have access to care 20 years ago, who still don't have access to care today. Um, and um, just the, the ways that we still have a long ways to go for our healthcare system to be what we hope it could be. Um, but also the beauty of having those long-term relationships and really knowing patients. And that's what I often hear from students. Um, that they find inspiring um, when they come to the free clinic. It's like, wow, you really know your patients. And I really do because I've gotten to spend so much time with them. And I think that's one of the beautiful parts of free clinic is, you know, in so many other healthcare settings, efficiency is um, so important and moving quickly um, is uh, often asked of physicians and uh, free clinic, we don't move very quickly. <laughs> we spend so much time with our patients and really, I think that is key, right? Like I get to hear people's stories. Um, and so what I tell students is like, you have the whole rest of your career to go fast, like take every opportunity to just sit with your patients and get to know them and ask them about life because our patients are incredible and resilient and have so much grit and have taught me so much about life. Um, and especially as I think back over the last two years in the pandemic, I've just learned so, so much from my patients. And I'm so grateful for the ways that they share their stories with me and with our students. Um, and just the, uh, the deep, deep relationships that we're able to build um, over the, the time that we spend. And so just being with patients, I think is so important. And, and I hope that I model that um, just a little bit for the students. You know, I think my first advice is find a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> find someone early. And I think it, it can be so intimidating to, um, to ask someone who's, um, you know, even just a little bit ahead of you um, to mentor you, but I think it's so instrumental. And I think the other thing I always talk about is when I think sometimes when we talk about mentorship, there's the idea that it's like one person, like you have one mentor, but that's so not true. And, you know, having, um, you know, if you're a freshman finding a, a senior who can, who's just a couple steps ahead of you to give you advice. And then, you know, and then maybe someone who's like a medical student, and then maybe someone who's a doctor and really getting the perspective of every step along the way, I think is really beneficial because I can, give lots of like big picture advice, but I don't remember the day to day of college and I don't know which professors are good. And, you know, like that, um, the nitty gritty that's going to help you take that next step. That's where that near peer plays such an important role. Um, so that's my first advice. And then I would say, you know, going back to my um, experience in college, like I would have done so much better in college if I had been a lit major. <laughs> For me, that I just, I would have had a more positive experience. I would have gotten better grades. Maybe I would have gotten into medical school the first time I applied. And so um, don't feel like there's like a one size fits all for how you do your pre-med journey. Um, there's so many, so many paths to medical school and it doesn't have to look like, what the people around you are doing or what you've heard or anything like that. And so being true to yourself and 
um, doing things that you enjoy and are good at, that's going to get you so far in, in life period, um, and in your pre-med journey. And so I think that's another really important piece of advice. And then the last thing I tell people is just that we need you right there. We need diversity in medicine to, um, to continue to move towards a healthcare system that we can all be proud of that serves everyone um, that promotes health equity. And so, um, you know, when challenging times come and you question whether you have what it takes to get there or whether it's what you really want, um, I, I hope that, that students hear and know that um, that we need them and their unique perspective um, and that the, the future of medicine is bright um, because of um, young people who are dedicated and committed to bringing positive change. Mm -hmm.